So, um, so uh, let, in the in lieu of uh, doing this journey properly throughout the rest of the solar system, let me just uh, quickly show you an overview in the solar system. Wait, not browser. Uh, solar system chart. So this is the view of our solar system that's to scale and it's the size of the things wise. Um, distance wise, maybe not so much. Um, it's showing the solar system architecture. So we've spent the last uh, 30, 40 minutes looking at Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and um, on the way to the outer planets, we could have looked at Ceres, which is the only dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. Um, we'll either do that later or some other time, uh, which is, I guess, another word for later. And this is Jupiter, our biggest gas giant. And Jupiter has many, many moons, um, including the four Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto. These are in the order of the distance from uh, Jupiter. And it's got many other dwarf moons, both in orbits closer than Io and in orbits larger than uh, Callisto. And, um, oh, uh, yeah. And I'll, I will show you just the one more thing with the Jupiter we wrap up. Um, before I go to the screen, let me just show you that there's uh, Saturn, the other gas giant, which is uh, smaller than Jupiter. And I think it's much less dense. It's, uh, I think, uh, um, light, uh, its density is low enough that it would uh, float on water. Um, the, we cover all its many, many moons. We just mentioned Titan briefly, which uh, has the distinction of being the only moon with an atmosphere. Um, or moon with the thickest atmosphere because it's the only moon with any kind of atmosphere. Um, and Uranus, um, it's got many moons. We don't talk about any of them because uh, they're all too small. <laughs> and, you know, we are kind of doing this quickly as you can kind of see in this tour <laughs> that's how only half complete. Neptune, the planet discovered through math, um, it has one largest, large ish moon, Triton. And did we land a lander there? I don't know if we did. Um, it's larger than other moons. Um, I don't think in the slides I mentioned it at all because um, we're going through quickly. <laughs> and then um, we have what's called a TNO or Trans Neptunian Object, starting with a Pluto. Um, it's a uh, it's the largest two of our dwarf planets. It's, uh, um, uh, it has a moon, and actually in kind of relative terms, it's got a pretty large moon. Um, like the relative size of Pluto to Charon looks kind of similar to Earth to moon, with the distinction being Pluto is smaller than our moon. So Charon is not that big. Um, and, but Charon is probably large enough to have been a dwarf planet on its own, except that it's a moon. So it fails the qualification on that basis. It's a moon <laughs> rather than a dwarf planet. And the other dwarf planet that's uh, worth, uh, disting uh, worth uh, uh, some distinction is Eris. That's the, um, what could have been our 10th planet but um, its discovery sparked some debate. And what was decided is that it should be, um, uh, we should create a new category of dwarf planet instead of making Eris a 10th planet and start a likely cascade of more and more planets. Because there are many trans-Neptunian objects that we probably haven't discovered. So, um, so we have these known dwarf planets, Eris, uh, Haumea and Makemake, but there are probably more that would uh, fit the qualification for dwarf planet. Uh, one thing I would say, so this is the portion of the software where you are looking at artist rendering. I'm pretty sure we haven't done any close flyby of Aries. So this texture you are seeing, it's all made up. <laughs> it's what someone imagines what surface of Aries could look like. I don't think there's any data that backs up this particular um, thing. It's so, you know, when you're using simulation software, you just have to watch out for that. When at places, the programmer has to fill in the details from imagination, not real data. Um, 